Welcome to video number six in our Robot C and VEC series. In this video, I'd like to go through variables with you, and we've actually already touched on them a little bit. When we went up to the motors and sensor setup window, we actually tied the word switch A to port digital one. Well, that's a variable. A variable is something that can be stored in the robot's memory. Examples can be things like whole numbers, decimal numbers, and words. For this example, I'd like to try to do it with a number. If you remember a long time ago, we used the motor port power of 127. Um, the engineer told us that for now, that was going to be good enough. But they've never actually put it onto the physical project itself. So that was just a placeholder. It was a place that we could go ahead and put in a value. And if we didn't have a value there, then we wouldn't have been able to run the program. So that 127 is going to change, probably. So what we'd like to do is make that something that's changeable or editable quickly. So up outside of task main, I'm going to go ahead and define my variable. I know that it's going to be a whole number, so it's going to be an integer, I-N-T. So I've now defined the data type. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is give it now a name. This is going to be speed. So integer speed and a semicolon. A semicolon is for anything that is a statement, anything that's a one and done. That one line of code is everything that's necessary. So I have defined the word speed as a whole number. In the next line, I'm going to go ahead and tell it what speed equals. So speed equals 127, a semicolon. So now I've gone ahead and said that the word speed is going to be a data type integer and that it's going to initialize at a 127. If I go ahead and run the program now, I can change this 127 to the word speed. Every time in my program it now sees the word speed, it's going to come up here, it knows that the word speed is an integer, and it knows that it equals 127. I like to go ahead and do both of those on the same line at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all of that and create it on one line. Both of them are acceptable. So now I've simplified the program a little bit and said that my variable speed is an integer and it's going to initialize at a 127. Anywhere in my program that it now sees the word speed, it will go ahead and replace that at a 127. So we'll go ahead and compile, download to the robot, and select start. So now we still have it on the OR from the last video, so I'll just use my A, and I can see that that's now being replaced with a 127. Do I truly know that? Well, since my debugger window is open, I can come down to my motors with PID, and when I hit my limit switch, I can see that the power equals 127. All right, so again, what is that for? Why is that useful? Well, now the engineer can come back to me and say, um, we didn't really want 127, we needed 125, we needed 20. I can now replace that value outside the program. It's easy to find everywhere I've placed that in the program. Right now we only have it once, but that may have been in the program 10 times. It will replace them all. Every time it now sees the word speed, it sees the word speed is equal to 20. We'll compile it, we'll download to the robot, we'll hit start and you should now see down in the debugger window the power value will now be 20. So my motor is now running at a slower speed. So that's awesome. I can now go ahead and put words inside my program and tie those words to numerical values. Let's take a look at another scenario. In this example, we're going to have the LED blink three times, on for a second and off for a second. So the pseudocode is going to look something like LED on, wait for one second, LED off, wait for a second, on, one, off, one, on, one. All right, so let's go ahead and start building the program. We've never actually used the little LEDs before. So I'm going to come over to the natural language. I'm going to expand that, and I'm going to go down to special. Now that's where the LEDs on and off live. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over this LED on and await an LED off and await. So we're going to replace that time with a 1. 
and then I'm going to change that digital port to we haven't done it yet. So I'm going to go up to the motors and sensor setup. And normally we know that an LED is an output. So we go to our motors tab and we take a look at the types and the only thing that's there is the flashlight. That's not the LED. We want the LED to actually be into a digital port, 1 through 12. And I'm going to go all the way down to number 12 right now and put it in here. This will be my green LED. Go to my sensor type and I have a VEX LED. Go ahead and say OK. And I can now call that green LED. And remember, that is a variable. Right, so that should blink once. It should go on for a second and off for a second. Let's give it a try. So I'll compile it. Everything looks good. We'll download the robot. And we'll hit start. So our LED came on for a second and then was off for a second. Now we really didn't get to see that. All we really got to see was the one second. So now we need to duplicate all of this so it does it three times. And I can tell you a lot of times it makes your program easier to read visually if you break it up with some commenting. So I'm going to add an extra line on here that says blink one. I'm going to copy all of this and paste it and paste it. So that's blink one, that's blink two, and that's blink three. So we'll go ahead and compile it. I'll download to the robot. I'll hit start and we should blink once, twice, three times. Awesome. But it's the same thing. They've come back to us being the other engineers or the other people involved in this program and they now think that the one second was too fast so they would like for it to be two seconds. If you look at the program right now I'd have to replace that once, twice, three, four, five, six. I'd have to replace that six times. So what if I just made that a variable? So I can put on int blink speed equals maybe it's now going to be two seconds and a semicolon. So now every time I had the one second copy that, replace it So now I can change this as often as I want. Every time they come back to me, two is not long enough. They want it to be two and a half. No, they don't want it to be two and a half. They want it to be one and a half. I can now just change that integer one time, and that variable will get replaced in the entire program everywhere that I've got it. But now they've come back to us, and they said they want it to blink ten times. Well, that's not really that hard. I can just copy and paste that over and over. My program is going to start expanding. It's going to start getting bigger and bigger. So I would like to do a loop and use a variable for it. So we know earlier we went up to control structures, we went to natural language, and there was a loop for a number of times. We could do that, but I think we're past that point. I think we can go ahead and use a while with a condition that has something to do with a variable, and I think that's going to make it pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and delete all the other blinks. We really only need the blink once. And I'm going to go ahead and add another variable int count equals zero, semicolon. So now I'm going to put a counter in there, and I'm going to create a while loop that looks for some type of variable that has to do with count. So while count is less than three. Remember, there is no semicolon because this is part of a structure. So I need to have a curly bracket and a curly bracket. Fix formatting, and remember you can always come up to the control structures and you can grab that while from there. It will automatically come with the parentheses and the curly brackets for you. Alright, so while count is less than 3, uh, well it is right now, it's a 0, so it's going to run it, and then it's going to come up and it's going to ask the question again, but it's still 0, so it's going to run it and run it and run it. Count is not evolving, count is not um, going up in increments. So what I want to do is at the end of this, I'm going to mess with that variable. I'm going to add one more line of code and I'm going to reinitialize it. I'm going to go ahead and say count. I don't need to say the word integer again. I've gone ahead and defined it outside the program. That made it a global variable, which we'll be able to look at here in just a second.
So count now equals, hmm, I need it to up itself by one. So I'll add it to itself. Count plus one. A semicolon. So this is where that one equals really comes in play. When I'm trying to do things like integers assignments, um, and I'm trying to try to use them somehow in the program, it's one equals for an assignment, and then two equals for a question. You might also then think that you're supposed to have two less thans or two greater thans. Uh, for whatever reason, you don't. Um, we only need one here. If you look at our Boolean logic chart here, you can see all the different options that you have. Um, is equal to or is not equal to, is less than, is less than or equal to, is greater than or is greater than equal to. So while count is less than three, blink, LED on, wait for that speed, LED off. Now let's go ahead and change our speed back to one because we don't want to wait forever. So I'll go ahead and compile the program, fingers crossed, it found no errors. We'll go ahead and download to the robot and let's count. We should be able to get this to happen three times. One, two, three. So now they've come back to us and they want us to go ahead and do it ten times. So we can replace that with a ten. And they've said that they want it to be a half a second. But that's gonna cause us a problem. So I can come up here and I can go ahead and type in a half a second. I can compile it and everything appears to be fine and I'll download to the robot. And when I go ahead and hit start, we should see it blink 10 times with a half a second for each cycle. But it, it doesn't do anything, it just goes right back to start. Well, I've come over here to the global variables and we can see right now that count is 10. And that the blink speed is 0. I thought the blink speed was at 0.5. I thought that's what we typed in there. It's an integer. You can't put decimals in for blink speed if it's going to be 0.5. If we wanted something to be a decimal, we'd have to put something in as a float. So float blink speed could be 0.5. Integers have to be whole numbers. So now let's give it a try. So I'll download to the robot. And I'll hit start. Excellent. Now we know how to use decimals in the programming. And that's awesome. So we now know how to use variables in the motors and sensor setup to replace a port name with a word. We know how to use whole numbers in the program as integers. We know how to define it and initialize it to a certain value, and we also know how to use decimals. So variables have a ton of different applications on our program. Not only can we use it to repeat code a certain number of times, but we could use it for things like remembering how many times a user has pressed a button, or if the button has ever been pressed, or to remember a maximum value, like the highest temperature it's been for the day. So start trying to put some variables into your coding.